60 million years ago, dinosaurs, they roamed the earth. And right now, we are about to see a living fossil, a link to the creatures of the past. And here to tell you all about it, we'd love to give it over to Laura. It's the Australian Zoo Crop Team. Give it up for it. Hey guys, I hope you're having a good day so far. It's about to get a whole lot better. Coming out today, we have got Monty. He's a massive saltwater crocodile. He's about to make his way out through the canal system. Today, we're going to show you guys how to stay safe up in crocodile territory. Already, we're making a massive mistake. We're way too close to the water's edge. I bet you there's someone up in crocodile habitat right now doing the exact same thing. He's not making a ripple on the surface as he comes through that canal system. Steve-O designed a prophecy with this crystal clear water to show you guys their natural behaviour. This is a pretty silly thing to do, but the biggest mistake you can do, and it's even sillier, is to go into the water in crocodile habitat. It makes him really, really angry. <laughs> Thanks heaps, Laura. Now, he's really started to pick up some pace there as soon as I got in the water. And if this was deep, dark, murky water where you naturally find the soldiers, you'd have no idea there was a 14-foot croc approaching you. Most people get into the water to have a fish or a bit of a paddle. And like Laura said, stand with my feet in different directions. He doesn't have to see, smell or hear me. He can feel exactly where I am based on my footsteps. And now that he's coming in nice and close, I'm going to give him a wide berth and get out. That is the danger zone right there where you definitely don't want to be. Hasn't broken surface until now. Come on, big fella. Oh, he's coming out. A bit slower today. Oh. Have it. <laughs> nice work, Monty. Now you can give it up for him, he's an absolute weapon. Alright, we're going to try and get a press. Press that three, mate. Now, that was a pretty good strike from Monty, but we'll see what happens if Jimmy gets back in the water and encroaches on his habitat. That's exactly right. I was further away from him then, but in his water, and he turned to come over to tell me to get out. So I did. Now, uh, if I go nervous here, it's because I am. With one flick of that tail, oh, there we go. Oh, sorry, buddy. <laughs> he can hit that fence in one go. Have it. Nice work, mate. Nice work. He's wicked, eh? He's so cool. Now, we do get nervous because with one swish of that tail, the fence line is easy for him. But it's what happens next that we get concerned about. It's the jaw pressure. In his mouth there, he's got over 3,000 pounds per closing inch. Uh, pressure, which is more than any other animal on the planet. It's more than a car crusher at the tip. They run off two and a half thousand psi and they crush a car into a tiny little cube. So if he grabs a pig on the head or a kangaroo, it is all over father shouting. Now Nero up there on the tail wall grab, he's going to try and offer Monty some food in another way that will naturally hunt in the wild. And this is a technique they use from the moment they hatch out of an egg when they're so little. They're about 15 centimetres long. They weigh 30 grams. They're at the bottom of the food chain and they hide in the reeds and they use this method. Nice work, mate. Nice work. To hunt spiders, insects, frogs, anything small enough where they can still stay hidden. But as they grow, they start to target larger food items. Magpie geese, snakes, possums. They absolutely love flying foxes as well. So if you do go up to northern parts of Australia, and you've got these beautiful ponds and, and billabongs with overlying branches. Don't hang out over them because that's exactly what the crocodiles can do. Even though it looks like a good place to read a book or flick a lure, not a good idea. Now we're going to try and get him out one last time. He's locked onto you, mate. Right here. I'll let you. You work him. Now, one last time we'll get Monty out for a strike. Show you how fast he can move on the hard solid ground. Oh. Nice strike, mate. But now, check Nero out. The first run to be able to here at the zoo, he grew up with Steve. Steve was about three foot tall, he was about three foot long at the same time. So, it means a lot to us, this animal just here. But he's awesome at demonstrating how easy it is to stay safe in crop territory. If you're checking him out now, look at his body shape. Tiny little stumpy legs and a big round belly. That tail drags behind him like a big old hand rake out here. In the water though, to propel him the cruising speed of a dolphin. I'll put my money where my mouth is and uh, sit down in front of Monty. 
Maybe he would lay down in front of Monty. I'm not going to stay here very long, that's for sure. But watch this, I get further away and start mucking around in his water. He's already looking at me. He doesn't like it one bit. That's because he knows he's designed for this life. 60 million years to be a vegetarian. Come on, mate, that's grass. No prettier. Now, 60 million years of evolution, eh, buddy? Oh, come on, dude. So, if you stay safe, or if you want to stay safe in frog territory, all you have to do is three simple things. Hang back from the water's edge. Four to five metres will keep you out of his strike range and the biggest salties that have ever existed. Don't overhang the water. We've got crocodiles here, Charlie. He can get his head up and over this top rail. They're incredibly capable of big jumps up using that tail. And whatever you do, guys, please don't go swimming with saltwater crocodiles. That's a rule that most people break and that's the rule that's easiest for people to think twice about because they look out over a billabong or a river, they don't see a crocodile for half an hour, an hour, and they think it's right to swim. He can hold his breath for seven hours at a time. Alcohol also plays a huge role. People have a carton, they get in the water, they do things they wouldn't normally do. Over 80% of crocodile attacks on people involve drugs. So guys, we want these animals here to stay. They're the largest living reptile on the planet, and we're just so honoured to have the team and these animals that we get to work with every day, eh, mate? Yeah, exactly. Now, we don't expect you guys to go away running crocodiles as much as Jim and myself. We're a little bit fanatical working with these guys every single day, but we hope that you guys will go away today with a bit more appreciation and respect for, this vital, for the vital role that these guys play up in our northern waterways. Now, Steve, up there feeding the crocs, he loved them with everything that he had, and that was no surprise to anyone. And what he did is he passed all his passion and enthusiasm onto everyone that you see working here at the zoo today, and hopefully some of you guys as well. So with that in mind, we would like to thank you so much for coming out to the zoo and helping us keep Steve's dream and this planet alive. Cheers, guys. Enjoy the rest of your day.